In the last video, we learned about the vModel directive and its usage with inputs, text areas, single select dropdown, and multi select control. In this video, let's learn about its usage with a single checkbox, a checkbox group, a radio group, and also let's learn how to submit the form data. All right, let's start with the single checkbox form control. In our job applicant form, we want the user to let us know if they're okay with working remotely or not. Like in the case of other form controls, this also can be implemented in three simple steps. Step one, add a new data property, remote work, and the initial value is going to be false. A single checkbox typically indicates true or false, which is why we initialize the property with false. So the checkbox by default is unchecked. Step two, add the HTML. So in the template block, another div tag. And within the div tag, we first start with the input element. Input type is equal to checkbox and ID is equal to remote work. In the next line, we add the label. For is going to be remote work again. And the text is going to be open to remote work with a question mark. So that is our step two. Step three, bind the data property using the vModel directive. So vModel is equal to form values dot remote work. If we now save the file and take a look at the browser, we have our checkbox. In the form values object, you can see that the value is initially false. If I check the checkbox, the value is now true. So based on the state of the checkbox, the value of the property will either be false or true. Now this works fine in most scenarios, but sometimes you don't want the Boolean values. Instead, you want something like yes or no stored in your database. For that, we can make use of two attributes, which are true hyphen value and false hyphen value. So back in VS code, on the checkbox element, we add true hyphen value is equal to yes and false hyphen value is equal to no. Let me format this and set the initial value to the string no. If we now save the file and head back to the browser, you can see that the initial value is no. If I check the checkbox, value changes to yes. So in this way, you can pretty much have any value assigned for the checked and unchecked states of a checkbox form control in view. All right, now that we understand how a single checkbox works, let's understand how to work with multiple checkboxes or a checkbox group, if we call it that. In the job applicant form, we want the user to select a list of skills they're comfortable with. Let's have HTML, CSS, and JavaScript as three checkboxes, and the user can select more than one skill. Again, this can be implemented in three simple steps. Step one, add a new data property. Let's call it skill set and set it to an empty array. Again, this is an array because the user can select multiple values. Step two, we need to add the HTML. Now to save us some time, I'm going to copy paste the HTML and then walk you through the code. So after the single checkbox, I'm going to paste another div tag. Now, as you can see, we have our div tag and within the div tag, we have the label for the checkbox group, which is skill set. Then we have three checkboxes. The first one is HTML. The label is HTML and the value for the checkbox is also HTML. We have the for attribute equal to HTML, which is also the ID attribute on the input element. And of course, the input type is checkbox. 
Similarly, we have the second checkbox for CSS and the third checkbox for JavaScript. That is step two, adding the HTML. Now step three, bind the data property using the vModel directive on each of the three checkboxes. So on the first input element, vModel is going to be equal to form values dot skill set. Let me copy paste on the other two inputs as well. The S is in fact an uppercase S. If you now save the file and take a look at the browser, you can see the three checkboxes for the skill set input. In the form values object, the property is an empty array. If I select HTML, the same is pushed onto the array. Select all three, all of them get pushed on to the skill set array. Our checkbox group works as expected. All right, let's take a look at the final form control, which is the radio group. Let's say we need the job applicant to select their years of experience. It could either be zero to two years, three to five years, six to 10 years, or 10 plus years. The user though can select only one option, which is why radio group is the best form control for this purpose. Let's see how to implement it again in three simple steps. First step, create a data property. Let's call this years of experience and set it to an empty string. Step two, let's add the HTML. Now the HTML is very similar to the checkbox group. So I'm going to copy paste the HTML and walk you through the code. So we have our div tag and within the div tag, we have a label for the form control, which is years of experience. And then we have four radio buttons. Each of them have a label and an input of type radio. We also have an ID attribute, which is equal to the form attribute on the label. The value for each of the radio buttons is also set. And you can see that I have also included the vModel directive binding, which is our step three. The binding is with the newly defined property, which is years of experience. If you now save the file and take a look at the browser, we should have the four radio buttons. The initial value in the form values object is an empty string. And when I select a radio button, its corresponding value is reflected. Zero to two, three to five, five to 10, and 10 plus. Our radio group control works as expected. All right, now that we have a good understanding of how to work with the various form controls, let's understand how to submit this form data. We begin by adding a submit button in our form. So after the radio group control, another div tag, and then a button. The text is going to be submit. It so happens that when the submit button is clicked, the form emits a submit event, which we can listen to using event binding. So on the form tag, we bind to the submit event and let's assign an event handler called submit form. This submit form is going to be a method. So let's define it in the script block in the methods object submit form. The method receives the event argument. By default, a form submission will cause the page to refresh. To prevent that, we call event.preventDefault. And in the next line, we simply log to the console the form values object. Form values, comma, this dot form values. Ideally, you would probably send this object to an API endpoint as the request body, but for now, I just want you to get an understanding of how to get hold of the form data when the submit button is clicked. Let's save the file, head to the browser, and open the console dev tools. I'm going to fill in all the form values.
and click on submit. If you take a look at the console, click on target, you can see that the object is logged with all the values that we have filled in. All right, that is pretty much the fundamentals of form handling in Vue. I hope you now have a good idea of the V model directive, how to capture values from the various form controls and also submit the form values which have been entered by the user. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.